it's talking. Why do I need initiative for talking? And why do I need to make like 50 freaking rolls to do anything? It takes too long. It's just garbage. I hate it. Ah! People want that rage. People want it. They want to see the drama. They want to see the drama. Welcome to the L5 Hour Dojo. I'm Corey. Come in, take a seat, and don't speak unless it's your turn to, because today we're covering intrigues. L5R has its own rule set for social encounters, where two or more parties wish to achieve a social end. I will be going over how to conduct an intrigue scene, and then I'll talk a bit about why these types of scenes are unnecessary. Look, L5R is written by many talented people, and I will be taking them to task. Everyone has wins and losses, and as a reviewer, I have to point them out. So, if you're a writer, rules maker, or just a fan of L5R and think I'm being unfair, just know that that's not my intention. I can only give opinions that I have, and while I may be bombastic as a YouTuber, none of this is personal. You got that, you moron? It's not personal. Momentum. Intrigue scenes use a rule called momentum. This is a way of having a single task require multiple roles. For example, if you want to forge a sword, your GM can give it a difficulty value of three, meaning to complete the sword, they would need three successful smithing rolls. In intrigue scenes, this means every point of momentum gained brings a character closer to their social goal, usually by wearing down their opponent. I'm wearing you down, baby. Much like how combat works, where a single roll seldom brings down an opponent, each attack wears down your opponent, giving them fatigue and wounds until either you or your opponent falls. Just replace fatigue with momentum for intrigue scenes and you got yourself a fair approximation. Social objectives. The book states that intrigues should be used when there are a large number of characters. Otherwise, a narrative scene should suffice. This is actually in direct conflict with how intrigue scenes are presented in officially produced adventures like Winter's Embrace and The Scroll or The Blade. In those adventures, the PCs participate in intrigue scenes with a single opponent NPC. So it's really up to the GM to decide if any scene needs to be an intrigue or not. Before anyone rolls initiative, and yes, you will be rolling initiative, a social objective needs to be set. In fact, when someone actually has a specific objective in mind for any scene, you can transform that scene into an intrigue. This seems to be the actual way intrigues are created in official adventures. Each character, PC and NPC alike, chooses a social objective. Players can confer with each other before they choose their objective. When more than one character chooses the same objective, they can support each other in accomplishing it. The book isn't specific on what the support looks like. If everyone has the same goal, do they all use the assist action? Or does each character roll separately for their momentum points and just pull them together? Maybe both is acceptable, but the book doesn't actually specify. The GM also assigns social objectives to NPCs as well. Those can be kept secret and the PCs can try to discover those during play. In fact, some PCs may also want to keep their goals a secret as well from the other PC. So, you know, pass a note to your game master. The first thing your players will want to know when an intrigue starts is, what kind of social objectives can I have? Even the player that started the scene with a specific goal in mind will want this information just to see if they want to change that goal. The book has several suggestions, and if you're using an adventure, there's usually a new social objective there specific to the adventure circumstances. The GM or player can come up with their own social objective they find fitting, but the Game Master needs to determine the difficulty value for those objectives. If your objective targets a specific individual, such as making an appeal to them, discrediting them, or discerning their qualities, the difficulty value is usually the target's focus value. This can be modified due to circumstances. For example, if the target is sleepy, or they're already predisposed to hate the PCs. 
if the objective has no specific target, the GM just uses their best judgment found a difficulty value. Mm. Couple of notes. Unmasking during these events can make a character instantly lose an intrigue. When one character is attempting to appeal to another character and they are discredited at first, this can end the intrigue right then and there. Lastly, spreading rumors is an objective a character can take. During an intrigue, a character can work the room and spread a piece of information, whether it's true or not. You're not trying to convince the person the rumor is true, you're just trying to get it out into the world. This doesn't seem like a thing that should be done during an intrigue where people are trying to do, you know, specific tasks. Rumor mongering to me seems like a downtime action where you talk to different groups during a long period of time. But it's not. It's here at Intrigue. Initiative. After choosing social objectives, every character rolls initiative. Greetings. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then Ignore the initiative value you just rolled, as players can take actions in any order. Unless two or more actions overlap or are at odds. Then the character with the highest status goes first. You can preempt this action if both your initiative score is higher and you lose one point of honor and glory for a breach of etiquette. I'm not sure why initiative is even a thing here. Why don't things just go in status order then? And if any character wishes, they can forfeit a number of honor and glory. Seems like an equally good way to me. In fact, I have never had my PCs roll initiative for an intrigue scene, and every scene has gone off as well as an intrigue scene can. Turns and actions. Just like all conflicts, intrigues are broken down into rounds and turns. A round in an intrigue doesn't have a set amount of time it takes. This is because it's full of banter, so a round can take as much time as you want it to take. The core rules state that an intrigue lasts as many rounds as needed to determine success or failure. But every official adventure gives a set number of rounds for their intrigues. For example, in Winner's Embrace, the first intrigue scene, running a tea ceremony, says it lasts for three rounds. At the beginning of a character's turn, they will set their stance as normal. Stances may be a physical posture, but it's mostly their rhetoric and their poise. Since it also dictates the ring they use in any action, it could also be the tack the character takes. You know, their approach. A character also gets a free move during their turn. They can move pretty much anywhere in the scene, so they can get in range of all of their actions and techniques. Moving in this way is not considered an action, so a character can move and perform an action each turn. After a character sets their stance and determines how they move, then they get to take one of four actions. Assist, Calming Breath, Persuade, or a unique action. Unique action. So that's like every other action. So you can take any action, and any, anything. You can take anything. Assist, Calming Breath, and Unique Action can all be performed in intrigues, duels, and skirmishes. I'm going to go over them here in detail, and in later videos, they'll just hang out in the sidebar over here. Wait, is, is the sidebar over here? Is it over there? Is this the sidebar? Assist is an attack, scheme, and support action where you help a character with their task at range 0 to 2. If you are unskilled in the task, the character you are assisting gains just a bonus ring die to their dice pool, and if you are skilled, they gain a bonus skill die. They are also able to keep an extra die on their assisted rolls no matter what, just because you're assisting. The player must describe how they are assisting, and the GM can veto any assist action that doesn't seem sufficiently justified. Calming Breath is a support action that helps with recovery. It allows a character to remove one fatigue if their fatigue is over half their endurance, and remove one strife if their strife is over half their composure. This is an and thing, so they get to do both. While I was editing this, I noticed something. In intrigue scenes, rounds take as long as they need to. So, if one person is over here doing a, like, two or three minute persuade action, and you're taking a calming breath, you're doing this. 
to regain fatigue and strife. In a uh, in an intrigue, it's usually going to be strife, but that takes a second to do. You could take a lot of calming breaths during that time period while well, that guy's over there talking and talking and talking and talking. It, it's just a weird thing. Like it works better in combat where people are fighting and then you take a breath as your action. But yeah, it just doesn't work in intrigue. The timing doesn't work. It's it's weird and it's just another flaw in the system. The unique actions are a catch-all. The PC describes what they want to do, and the GM determines what kind of action it is and what the TN is if a role is needed. Unique actions can also be techniques like school techniques, kiho, invocation, and especially shuji. Many shuji are made specifically for intrigues. Shuji can also modify roles or give extra options for spending opportunities and bonus successes, as if you know, your list for using opportunities wasn't large enough. Now we get to the bread and butter of intrigues, Persuade. Persuade is the chief way a player gains momentum points. When a character succeeds in a Persuade check, they gain one momentum point, and then they can gain extra momentum points for every two bonus successes. The TN of the role is based on the target's vigilance, and it can be modified by which skill is used to persuade. That's right, not only does this check have an approach, but the player also has the choice of skills. If a character uses the command skill, the TN of the role is reduced by one against characters that have a lower status rank than them, due to the fact that it's easier to command those of a lower station. If they use courtesy, the TN is reduced by one against characters with a higher status rank because, you know, you're supposed to brown nose them. And if a character uses games, performance, or any other skill, then the TN is reduced by one for characters of equal rank. The book says you use diversions away from the affair to persuade, which to me is strange, but I can see it as trying to make connections through shared interests and using that to persuade someone through friendship. These roles can be further modified by an NPC's demeanor and the circumstances of the scene. Speaking of the circumstances of the scene, I bet you're wondering with all this initiative rolling, deciding of actions, making even more roles every round for momentum, where's all the role playing in this social scene? When do I talk? You will address this court as judge or your honor, and you will not address this court until you will not address this court. Well, that's an interesting question. The book states that a GM can give out RP bonuses to TNs or even give out bonus momentum. This seems to insinuate that before any action, there's a bit of a role play that happens that justifies the action. If a player is using command to persuade, they should role play that, either through description or by speaking as your character. Then, after your character gains a success or failure, that should be roleplayed as well. This can seem like you're roleplaying by piecemeal, doing a tiny bit of RP, then making a roll, then doing a tiny bit of RP again before the next player's turn. But I'm gonna talk more on that later. Resolution. When a character or group of characters gain momentum points equal to or more than their difficulty value, they have completed their goal. This is usually a time when the Game Master will wrap up the intrigue with the results. But an intrigue scene can persist, especially if you're running an official adventure that has a set amount of rounds. If this is the case, players that have just completed an objective can just choose another one. If the completed goal was to discredit someone, then that person gains enough strife to become compromised. Then they can either unmask, causing them shame, and possibly their goal if they were trying to appeal, or they can retire from the scene, which also causes them to lose. But wait, isn't retiring from the scene the same as unmasking as a retreat? What's the difference between retiring and retreating? Also, the rules don't specifically state that the character must unmask or retreat, just that those are options for being compromised. There are actually two more options. That is, to take a calming breath, which takes your character immediately out of their compromised state, or to just remain compromised and take the penalty. 
This basically gives the victory condition of discrediting someone no teeth. And I think that the spirit of the rule means to make them unmask or retire. At least, that's how I run it. If the goal was to appeal to a person or group, then that person or group takes your perspective. It's kind of like mind control. Isn't that neat? If someone with higher status than you completes an appeal, then your appeal is overridden and they get the mind control instead. If your social objective was to discern someone's qualities, then you get to choose three aspects of that character you wish to know about. And finally, if you're spreading a rumor, then that rumor is spread. You did it. If the objective was something special to the adventure, then those rules should be stated in the adventure, and if it was something that the players created, then the GM gets to dictate the results. Courts of Stone notes that any failed intrigue should still have a narrative result that moves the story forward. Like, you know, failing up. <laughs> Remember, to move the story forward in a way that places more hurdles in front of the PCs, but it does give them a way to continue. With that, we're done discussing the rules. If you think I missed something, give me a comment. But in the meantime, I'm going to discuss why I don't like these rules in a segment I like to call Criticism Corner! Yay! We spent a good long time telling you how intrigues work, and now I'm going to tell you why they don't. First off, let me say that I'm not in the camp of people that says there shouldn't be any rules for social interactions in RPGs. There definitely should. But it needs to complement a game system, not impede it. And here, it definitely impedes gameplay. Imagine this. You're in the middle of a conversation with an NPC. We introduce ourselves, have small talk, we're getting down to business, and now you begin to persuade. And suddenly, instead of having to make a single roll, you now have to roll initiative and take a stance. Then, every round you have to continue to persuade, making roll after roll. This gets frustrating real fast, as you already set up the circumstances through RP to persuade anyways. Then, of course, with each roll, there are techniques to use, opportunities to spend. Then you have to continually come up with more and more things to say every round, more and more RP for the same topic you already hashed out before the GM ever decided that this was an intrigue. This is also complicated by the fact that you're stopping your RP. All the momentum in your argument is now deflated as you have to roll initiative, come up with an objective, make rolls every round in between tiny bits of RP. This leads to disjointed conversations that have a good possibility of making no sense if you cut out all the rolling bits and like splice them together and <laughs> you know, like you're editing a video or even worse your players stop talking as their characters and instead just describe what they say in third person. This is terrible because it, it makes the game less cinematic, less epic. It draws everyone out of it. As I said, the core rules state that intrigue should be for large, complicated scenes. But that's not how they're used in official adventures. They use it for events that pit the party against one person or just one unified group. The only exception I've seen to this so far is in the Kamari scene in the scroll or the blade where there were three distinctive sides. Mind you, this is so far as of like when I'm recording this, so things may change in the future. I've run all of these adventures and more over on my sister channel, Dead Unicorn Live, where we stream real-time playthroughs of all the official adventures. So, you know, go check it out. So what do you do instead? Well, I find the best ways to persuade in RPGs is to find out what a character wants and what their goals are. This doesn't mean you're always blackmailing a person or bullying their allegiance. It could just mean you're being friends with them. You have camaraderie through shared interests. Skill roles should be used to get an NPC to talk about themselves, open up, rather than, well, mind control. You win your role, so now the NPC does exactly what you say? That's always been a stupid rule in any RPG, and even stupider because it can be leveled against a PC too. Now, you forced your players into doing something they don't want and are probably having a bad time because of it. 
What if you don't have time to get to know a person before you persuade them? Well, L5R already has a handy rule for that. Remember staking your hogs? Yeah, you can simply stake an amount of honor, glory, or status to get a person to trust you to complete a task. I mean, why is this even a rule when you can just use an intrigue scene to mind control a person to believing you? <laughs> Staking your hogs is a vastly superior rule to intrigue scenes. I bet you're wondering how I do intimidation. Cause you know, doesn't that also work like mind control? Well, in most games, yeah, do this or else and roll a successful intimidation. And that can get an NPC to do what you want. So how do we change this to become more fair? A choice and a rules consequence for not doing that intended action. For example, if you want to intimidate a person to drop their weapon, first you must succeed on the roll. Then the target gets a choice. Either they drop their weapon or they take an amount of strife. Now, instead of a player being forced to do something, they're weighing the consequences of not doing that thing. And the choice is ultimately theirs. Now, I've heard this argument quite a bit. Social scenes, like intrigues, help people new to RPGs. Or it gets wallflowers a place to RP where other players might overrun the table with their talk. I don't think rules-heavy social scenes actually help in this situation. Instead of opening a player up, now they're just going through a mountain of rules they have to learn instead. I think if there are problems at the table in social RP, it's a better tack to stop the game and talk about how everyone at the table can make the game more fun, especially if there's a table hog. Still, if intrigue scenes are the solution, then they should be optional, not a standard rule. But as it is now, intrigues are baked into this version of L5R. And it's supported with techniques, making them hard to ignore. Intrigue rules are a terrible addition to L5R, and if you can avoid them, I would. I hope future editions take them out or replaces them with something a little more simple and free-flowing that, that complements the action instead of stopping it. And forcing players to do repetitive roles or forcibly changing their mind. That's it for now. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their support. You can check out my uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash deadunicorn. I have some free RPG stuff, and if you like it, consider joining. Well, thanks for sticking with me through all of this. What are your thoughts on intrigue scenes? How do you keep them interesting and not stagnating into just a series of roles? If you don't use them, what do you use instead? And which RPGs do you think have the best social rules? I want to hear everything you got. And remember, never stop gaining experience.